Well, how are you doing, world? Devin Henderson here, live from U.S. Toy Magic Shop in Kansas City, Kansas, or Missouri, whichever. <laughs> Kansas City, Missouri, I think. I live here, I should know, I suppose. We're here with the wonderful, amazing mentalist, Mark Salem. Uh, this gentleman just gave us an amazing lecture, not your traditional magic lecture, because it's a mentalism lecture, and we were completely floored by his concepts and his originality. So we thought... We're going to pick his brain a little bit more and just ask him a few questions. So, Mark, thank you for uh, doing this for us. Hey, I'm delighted to be here. So appreciate it. Well, okay, uh, comedians are famous for referring to people as tough crowds. So, as a mentalist, what does a tough crowd look like to you? Um, probably not sober. Uh, I find the toughest crowds are those who can't concentrate. Though the smarter someone is, the easier they are to work with. And I think the easier they are to fool. Um, when I walked in here, I saw the people. And in fact, I saw the shop. And the shop is just unbelievable. If you have a chance to get down here. I saw resources here that I haven't seen in years. Um, and they have everything here. Um, I could spend the next five hours not talking to you, but just going through their stock. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think the this toughest audiences are those who aren't paying attention and those who aren't bright enough to follow. Um, but this was a bright audience. Thank you. I happen to be in the audience. Um, but, what is <laughs> but what does Mark Salem know? He's only performed for like, what, 7 billion people in the, uh, in the course and of... One. And one. All right. <laughs> well, um, you, you, you mentioned this. Um, you, you talked about some finances, how, you know, you were a you are a well-paid mentalist because you get what you pay for, and you're amazing. But but the best reward sometimes isn't financial. So for you, what is the best reward for the work that you do? Um, well, believe it or not, the number one best reward is laughter. Um, I really try to make the show funny and humorous and accessible to all ages. I don't play down to young kids or play up for intellectuals. I mean, it's the same show for everybody. But mentalism allows you the latitude to change things mid-performance. Uh, uh, but the sound of laughter, actually, uh, it's almost a cue line for me where to stop and where to go on. Uh, so that is um, my measuring tool. And uh, the oohs and ahs, I'd rather step on an applause to get a laugh. Nice. That sort of like laughter is the best medicine applies to you as an entertainer here on the stage. If you're ill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's not every day that somebody hears about a mentalist. You know, they're thinking, what is that exactly? Everybody, you know, kind of knows what a magician is. But a mentalist, what's the first thing when you tell people what you do, what's the most common question you get asked? Um, well, actually, since the TV show The Mentalist came out, more and more people know what a mentalist is. I never used to call myself a mentalist. I call myself a purveyor of mind games. And it's just since the show The Mentalist came out that the word has fallen more into the vernacular that's being used. In England still, a mentalist is an insane person. Someone in a mental institution is called a mentalist. So uh, in England, I never used the term. Well, there you go. I guess you learn something new every day. I just did. I did not know that. Um, <coughs> so so this, this is good, Mark. This is, this is good getting the insight from you. Uh, just about what it is to be a mentalist as opposed to a magician, because I'm assuming most of the people in your lectures are magicians, and they may not grasp that concept of uh, being a mentalist, right? But, but I want to ask you, uh, unless do you want to comment on that? You, know, you might as well finish. I know <laughs> my job is a mentalist. That's right. You know what I'm thinking. All right. Thank you, Mario. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, that's one thing he's good at is rolling with the punches. It's, it's amazing. Not that anybody actually is able to punch you. You're able to dodge them, and then you roll with it somehow. It's, it's amazing what you do. But let me ask you this. If you weren't a mentalist, what would you do for a profession? Well, I'm actually a college professor, so um, I'd be a college professor. I, even within this venue, um, I'm teaching, and I love teaching. In my soul, I'm a teacher. Uh, there have been critics who say that, that even the performance, there's an element of your favorite professor and your uncle who says, pull my finger. I thought you were gonna, I thought you were gonna do it. <laughs> so if, uh, if Mark Salem points at you, it means 
He's saying, he's implying, pull my finger. All right. Now we know. All right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 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 <That's good. laughs> All right. Awesome. So what, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Who did you receive it from? How old were you? What kind of difference has it made for you? Well, Lee Earl uh, certainly years and years ago gave me the advice, don't run if no one's chasing you. And uh, again, I think in mentalism, but even in magic, it, it is a naturalistic approach. Um, you know, if things are handled naturally, people aren't going to want to look closer. The more you hide secrets and you feel like you're hiding secrets, the more people are going to try to explore it. So it, it is the casual, nonchalant kind of approach that is the hardest to put on because that's true acting because you really are shaking in the inside and you are hiding lots of things. But the, the more spontaneous things look and the more nonchalant. So I think that was probably among the, the best words of advice from within that realm. The, the other was buy long, sell short. And that was with my son, and he was always wrong. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I can relate to what you're saying uh, as a mentalist because sometimes uh, I have a mentalism show, and sometimes we overthink it, right? Like we try to, like, get too sneaky when, when you don't have to be so sneaky, right? Good stuff. Uh, so would you rather um, own a time machine or a teleportation machine? How's that for a question, Mark Salem? Well, if you own the teleportation machine, you could travel backwards in time. But if you own a time machine, you cannot necessarily teleport. Okay, smart guy. Let's say that that weren't the case and you had to pick one or the other. Which one would it be? Watch, he's going to stump me on this one, too, but go ahead. Uh, the, the time machine sounds good. Uh, I mean, I could get anywhere I want to go by, you know, taking a bus. So <laughs> teleportation devices in New York subway, that's a teleportation. But time travel is fascinating, uh, even just to the past, even if it doesn't work to the future. Um, you know, the, the, the past fascinates me. I'm a history buff. Uh, as a hobbyist, I mean, not, not in any specialty way, but uh, magic history, certainly mentalism history. Um, but, yeah, the, the time machine is it. In fact, let me travel back in time. The time machine is it. <laughs> My watch even moved back. That was amazing. This guy is, like, the real deal. That's crazy. So I guess you're a big Back to the Future fan. Uh, number one and number three. Number one and number three. Those are good. I like two as well, yeah, but uh, anyway, yeah. They had some editing problems with that one. They rushed it a little bit, if you noticed. <laughs> <laughs> the hoverboards, come on, man. Now look how old those look. Yeah, they do. They do. Poor special effects now. Okay, so uh, anyway, um, books or DVDs? Books. Books. Why books? Why not? Uh, because Let's move on. That was good. Books will stay with you forever. Um, and you don't, you could carry them. DVDs, you'll buy, and chances are you'll look at it when you have a chance. And if there's not the chance, I have DVDs that have never been opened. I don't have any books that have never been opened. Uh, books are portable. Now, again, now, if you're saying e-books or DVDs, I would say e-books. If you say books or e-books, probably I'd buy each. Or go back to the future before there were e-books and just get the book. First edition. That's good. That's good. Or even go back before the book was written to the and author right. and just, just extract their ideas. Or just write it yourself. There you go. Talk about inspiration, man. <laughs> That's great. So uh, let me ask you this. What got you interested in mentalism? In other words, you know, did you become a magician first and then mentalism? Tell me about that. Not, not not really. I didn't uh, first deal a great deal with magic. Uh, the mind has always been a, uh, an amusement park for me. Uh, I chose psychology as a field and uh, mysteries and puzzles and, you know, mind work has always been the, the most fun. So I've always enjoyed magic and been a fan of magic. But uh, the aspect of it that I enjoy the most it has always been the mental puzzler. Yeah, <laughs> there's that mental word again. It's really getting to me. Um, okay, <coughs> so I, really seriously, the lecture was amazing as far as concepts. I was my lecture notes were extensive with oh the, the the tricks. It was just the concepts and how ori original and creative. 
some of them were like like the pendulum thing and i don't want to give it away because you know this is your baby um but can you give us an idea how do these ideas come about what sparks your creative genius uh basically it is either through an accident and suddenly developing that or it's a problem that has to be solved um the the the, the gift bag uh, was a problem and i set about and it took four years to develop it but but ultimately i came up with a solution that satisfied me so it's not giving up maybe filing it away a little bit and then coming back to it um, and other things come as immediate um, you know spontaneous things sometimes uh, early in the morning uh, just uh, hits you and some through grueling trial and error well it pays off and obviously the stuff you do is like Real, like real world, like you actually use this stuff. You're not just like, oh, make some stuff up to you know sell or give away. This is like, y y you have motivation to do this because you actually put this to use. The gift bag thing was very cool. Blew me away, honestly. It, it was amazing. Okay, <coughs> so speaking of time travel and all that, if you could go back, like you talked about going back, let's say you could go back any time in history, okay? Um, who would you pick to perform for and why? Probably somebody who's dead. Um, Ludwig uh, Wittgenstein, um, because of his interest in uh, linguistics and semantics, would be my first choice. Um, <laughs> my second choice. Well, he came up with the question. I just have to answer it. Um, I, I, you know, th there's an effect called the trick that fooled Einstein. Uh, I'd like to fool, have a trick that fools Einstein. Um, I think it's a mind to contend with, and I'd like to, uh, that would be fun. So uh, let's settle on Einstein instead of Wittgenstein. Or Eve. Eve would also be good. Uh, but, you know, Adam tries to button everything, so I don't know. Yeah. Adam and Eve kind of messed everything up, huh? <laughs> I would have done the same thing if I were him. Hey, uh, one last question we have. Oh, look at that. Um, do you have any – I wish I wish we had the rest of the night, Mark, but you're a busy guy. you got to catch a plane tomorrow morning. Anyway, um, do, you have any <laughs> do you have any projects coming up? Last question. Any new projects heading our way? Yes. Awesome. Back to you, uh, Baxter. Thank you.